Hi, Elon Musk's Cybertruck has been a controversial project from the moment the world first laid eyes on it. But after nearly five years, multiple delays, a global pandemic, and one extremely ill-informed purchase, the Cybertruck is finally on the road. And it's falling apart. And it's rusting. It doesn't work. It can obliterate a child's arm. It's just sharp in general. Oh my god. That's just the edge of the door. Yeah, uh, Cybertruck. Not just for getting you into Yosemite, also for vegetable prep. It's having critical errors immediately after picking it up. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, we already broke it. <laughs> Which causes the giant screen in the middle to flash red and blare an alarm really loud while you're trying to drive. They're being delivered dusty. I don't know why that one gets me, but just weird. <laughs> it's been nearly four months since the very first Cybertrucks were delivered to customers, and it's safe to say it is already a disaster. So it does close all the way down on the fingers. It's latched. People used to like Tesla, like really like Tesla. But for some reason, enthusiasm about the future of driving has kind of waned as Tesla cars themselves have become almost unavoidable in America's major cities. There are a lot of factors as to why they're so popular, things like tax credits being a status symbol, and the fact that people do really want affordable, fully electric cars, especially ones that they can just charge at home. The demand is so high that the EV market is finally starting to generate momentum. So from Tesla's point of view, it makes sense that they would want to put out a radically different product to set their brand apart before the market becomes really oversaturated. Oh, I forgot to turn my lights on. I'm an idiot. I forgot to- Ah! But as of right now, Tesla is the American EV manufacturer. But that's probably because it's uh, illegal to buy ones that are better and cheaper. But why can't I just buy the better car, you ask? Well, in an article by the Heritage Foundation, a far-right think tank and proud supporters of the worst positions you can ever have, written by that PragerU oil demon, Diana Fergot Roth, remember her? But after 16 years of futile What effort, is that? Okay, well, we made a joke about that name. Can I have a go? Can I have a go? Yeah, I think, I think we should each try to pronounce it. Oh, that's mental. <laughs> <laughs> She's the director at the Center for Energy, Climate, and Environment at the Heritage Foundation. Good. No, that's... I'm glad. And her article titled, America Should Ban Chinese EVs, should hopefully shine a light as to why these cars aren't allowed here. The Heritage Foundation are Congress policymakers, after all. Spying? Americans were concerned in February 2023 about a Chinese spy balloon moving from Alaska to Montana to the East Coast. It was shot down in South Carolina. The balloon, 2,000 feet tall and weighing over 2,000 pounds, Pounds, contain solar panels and equipment to collect sensitive information. That sounds like ChatGPT. There's no way, right? Okay, so apparently it's not AI. It's just bad writing. <laughs> Chinese EVs could be equipped with even more powerful spying equipment than the balloon that wasn't spying. <laughs> they could go anywhere, including military bases, power plants, and cell phone towers. Places the balloon had no access to. EVs would be far more effective than spy balloons at collecting important data and at far lower cost because Americans would be purchasing these vehicles. So yeah, I guess the cars could spy on you, but American cars can and definitely do collect your data as well and sell it and give it to the government or whatever. But to be fair, when a Chinese company does it, it is scary. I want Facebook to do it instead. Maybe Comcast? Let them listen to what I'm doing in my car. The 2022 Inflation Reduction Act contained over $1 trillion in clean energy initiatives to fund EV and battery manufacturing plants and consumer tax credits to develop a domestic EV industry. But CCP subsidies for Chinese EVs can undercut these programs and American EV production, contrary to congressional intent. So I guess the answer is to make them illegal. I like the subtle budget hawking as well. Just plant it into that paragraph for no reason. Congress is trying to like build a domestic EV market and create thousands of jobs. It's not enough. And the answer isn't to do it more. 
It's to stop it and also make everything from China illegal. My name is Diana Fergaroth. China has lower costs for labor, both due to its low wage workforce and from use of child labor and slave labor in Xinjiang. So with no evidence whatsoever, Diana Fergaroth claims that Chinese EVs are cheaper because, of course, slave labor and child labor. It's China. They do that there. And then the link goes to a Fox News article about how Timu products were found to be using slave labor by an AI program. Ben Zion identified Timu as a potential source of fraud after seeing the prices for products, which he claimed just don't make sense. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand how this is happening. The AI says it's slavery. The AI flags prices that are lower than they should be, and they immediately extrapolate that to mean it was made with slave labor. And then assume it's done in Xinjiang. Are you scared yet? I'm convinced. Let's go to war with China. As far as American EVs go, though, the Cybertruck has had some embarrassing problems from the very start. Oh my fucking god. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. But despite most of the things about it. According to a Tesla fan-made Google Doc, there are over 2 million Tesla Cybertruck reservations. This is a calculation done by Cybertruck enthusiasts using a lot of different factors, but as far as verifiable numbers go, 53,022 reservations have actually been reported directly to them which aren't necessarily pre-orders. It's only a $200 or a $500 deposit. For context, only 5 million Jeep Wranglers have ever been sold. We're talking about a lot of cars. As of right now, though, it's hard to tell exactly how many Cybertrucks have been delivered and are on the road. Tesla won't say. To be fair, it's only been four months of deliveries, but by February, around 1,300 Cybertrucks were estimated to be delivered to customers. And at that rate, it was estimated about 250 to 375 units were being delivered per week, which which means if they're being delivered at that same rate at the time of me recording this, between 3,550 and 4,675 Cybertrucks could be on the road right now. It makes me wonder how long it's going to take for everyone to actually get theirs. The Cybertruck website says if you order now, it'll be delivered sometime in 2025, but I have a feeling it might take a little longer than that. Elon Musk is no stranger to making pretty exorbitant promises when it comes to his cars, and not really delivering on them. The Tesla Roadster back in 2011 was an impressive novelty, a proof of concept, that it's possible for an electric sports car to exist. But the first model of the Roadster never made it to mass production, and now it's in space. After multiple delays, the second model of the Roadster is now planned for 2026, and it's supposedly going to be a collaboration between Tesla and SpaceX. Elon already said in the presentation for the the Cybertruck that they're using the same like steel in the rockets or whatever. He wasn't very specific and hasn't really said anything about it since. So it's 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 ultra hard, cold rolled uh, stainless steel alloy that we've developed. We're going to be using the same alloy in, in the Starship rocket and in the Cybertruck. But I guess that wasn't like an official collab. Elon Musk has also insinuated that the Roadster could fly. The Roadster will be uh, a collaboration between SpaceX and Tesla. So you know, you can expect some rockety stuff there. Um, a flying car? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking thing's never coming out, is it? You can pay $50,000 to reserve one, though, if you felt like it. You can always give him more money. All right, that's enough about fake cars. Now it's time to talk about a real car. Truck. What the fuck is this for? Elon Musk has compared it to an armored personnel carrier. I guess in a hailstorm, this wouldn't dent, would it? No. That's a and can, you know, combine that with a bioweapon defense mode, the the um, HEPA filter that we have inside. You, yeah. You're pretty pretty safe in the apocalypse. And that HEPA filter is pretty unbelievable, isn't it? If it if yeah, I mean, there's some mustard gas attack. Exactly. <laughs> Again, like when the apocalypse comes, this is where you want to be. For this sure. is where you want to be. That's yeah. right. In case the world ends, you'll still have your car. Don't worry. Your property will be protected under all costs. Also, if there was an apocalypse, how would you charge it? There's not even handles on the outside. So if it lost power, you literally couldn't open it. Obviously, this would be an extreme situation. The power is lost. You're unable to roll the windows down. Let's go ahead and try the glass breaking tool in three, two, This did nothing. Yeah, I mean, I could just, I could just polka dot it. Basically, it'll crack it, uh, and that'll help you get out in an emergency. But <laughs> that one didn't even crack. This thing is fucking stupid. Okay, so before I get to what the truck is actually like, here are some of the features that Elon promised that 
aren't there. The vision for the Cybertruck is basically an SUV with all kinds of outdoorsy features, but also the power and speed of a real sports car, and the look of a Halo warthog with a Metal Mario hat on. During the initial reveal in 2019, the Cybertruck was shown to have a 500 mile battery range on the most premium model, of course. So this dual motor Cybertruck is gonna get on a full 100% charge up to like 320 miles indicated. You can actually drive more like 290. And the triple motor, which I've been recently living with, maxes out at 300 indicated, which is actually more like 265, 275. And it's also not the fastest charging Tesla we've seen either. You go to a regular Tesla supercharger and you don't max out at quite the same charge curve speeds for a long time as like a Model 3 or a Model S would. Elon also said it was bulletproof to nine millimeter specifically. It is literally bulletproof to a nine millimeter uh, handgun. That's how strong the skin is. They showed it off by shooting a Tommy gun at it. No one has a fucking Tommy gun anymore. My truck is immune to 100 year old weapons. There are actually certifications for things to be bulletproof. Elon Musk may have used materials that are certified to be bulletproof, but that doesn't mean the way those materials are used provides protection from bullets in any circumstance. And it's hard to test for because every test you would do is just a simulation, a hypothetical. This isn't even close to what it would be like if you actually wanted to shoot someone in a car. <laughs> Oh my god! Dude. Oh my god! Oh, she's like a girl. Oh my god! What are you? It went through? Yeah. Stop! 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 It went through. It went through. No, you're kidding. I swear to God. <laughs> now I gotta pay like 10k. What the fuck? What do we do? Of course she's a bracelet. I'm done, dog. Got me shit in my pants and shit. I'm, I'm shaking. Yo, Elon. I need a new truck, please, bro. <laughs> no, no, straight up. You Elon. Elon. Listen, bro. <laughs> and none of it really matters because the fucking glass isn't bulletproof anyway. So you could just shoot through that. Problem fucking solved. So the metal the truck is made of is bullet resistant, even though you can still punch a hole in the steel with a varmint rifle. Three, two, one. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can see that from here. Yeah. That's go. sick. Okay, let's go check it out. What's the damage? Oh my gosh. Oh, that went crazy. That's all the way through. Anything in the backside? Interesting. You use these guns on rabbits. The AR-15 is the best-selling rifle in America. You could punch right through that shit. And destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it went straight through. Anyway, none of this matters. You could shoot any car if you really wanted to. Uh, trucks are supposed to be tough, right? Yeah. So, is your truck bulletproof? Oh no, we shot through some wires. These are just a few smaller things that Elon said the truck would have that it doesn't. The fold out ramp for the trunk? I don't know why you would ever show that and be like, nah, take that out. I hate accessibility, I'm Elon Musk. That's woke, that's DEI. <laughs> I, I genuinely can't think of a reason they would have possibly taken this out other than they couldn't figure it out. They didn't know how to do it. Elon also said there would be an onboard air compressor. Um, and as a little plus, because it's got an air suspension, we can tap off the air suspension so you have a, a, a pneumatic source. So you have an, a, a, yeah. yeah. You need an onboard air compressor. It's just like random shit. Coffee maker? I don't care. I don't know why he would just say this and then it not be in the car. <laughs> I totally understand how an air compressor could be a regulatory thing or just a hazard in general, but Tesla certainly aren't strangers to complaining about regulations and trying to get them changed. We didn't want mirrors. Right. And oh. so in the beginning, we weren't even designing mirrors. And then just, we couldn't get the regulations changed. You wanted so cameras? Up, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. okay. Which is bad, by the way. It's fucked up that they can do that at all. If corporations don't wanna follow the law, they could just change the law. An onboard air compressor would be pretty cool especially considering the weird tent it comes with is inflatable. And for people who love going camping like me, I, that would be awesome. The Cybertruck in its ideal form would be really cool for off-roading and camping if it worked at all, if it had any of the stuff that it should. <laughs> Another thing Elon promised was full autopilot. Of course it will come with autopilot standard. Yeah. yeah. I think that's legal, especially not on this fucking thing. This next one, I can't tell if Elon is lying or just 
being weird. He said the windows are made of transparent metal glass. It is literally bulletproof to a nine millimeter uh, handgun. What, what about the glass? Seems like a vulnerability. <laughs> yeah, tra transparent metal glass. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> transparent aluminum is a real thing, but not what they're using for these windows. It's just glass. It's strong glass, but it's just glass. Not transparent metal. No metal. Glass. He also said the starting price would be $40,000. And but it's gonna... The cheers he gets at this moment, it's so funny. The starting model for the Cybertruck is almost $60,000. And like always, Tesla gate keeps the best and promised features behind the highest priced model. So even though the most expensive version was supposed to be around 70,000, it ended up being around 100. What happened? What, what's going on? At the end of the presentation, and I feel like many have forgotten this, uh, but he adds kind of half-heartedly that they made an ATV. So, oh yeah. but. We we made an uh, we also made an ATV. So <laughs> now let's bring it out. Yeah, that's that's just nowhere to be seen. I thought these were like a pair when they were first announced. Elon doesn't even sound fucking excited about it. We we made an uh, we also made an ATV. So. He hates this thing. And yeah, since then they haven't said a fucking word about it other than making it a toy for children. Here you go, guys. Here's your ATV that he promised. The ATV was completely unsafe to drive and they're doing a full recall. And today I received my check to finally get paid back for what I paid for this ATV. So yeah, it kind of sucks that I won't be able to use this ATV anymore. But honestly, the brake broke on it about a month ago, so this actually helps me. Elon also said he wanted it to be a boat and have a boat mode. I don't know. This feature was compromised down into wade mode, which lets the truck drive in a couple of feet of water. Which to be fair is something that most cars generally can't do, but it's a far stretch from boat mode. Also, if you drive it too much in the water, it starts fucking falling apart. <laughs> What is up guys, TechRax here. So in this video, we have a Cybertruck. We are gonna be testing it out against a big puddle of water. You know, maybe like a foot. I don't think it's that deep to be honest, but we are gonna find out guys. Look at that. Wow. Oh my goodness, bro. Okay guys, the front was making a little bit of a rattling sound. You could see the little fender piece was in the way, but we popped it back in. Shouldn't be a biggie. Obviously this was like an extreme uh, flood test. Uh, besides that, and the little piece here in the back, that seems like the only issue so far. So right here, there's this little plastic, plastic piece, which is kind of snapped out. Um, but I think we're good to go guys. Now one quick thing I wanted to show you guys it's been a few hours since that water test when I press these buttons They don't seem to want to work overall guys everything seems to be fairly normal I do hear some water swishing around there. Um, I'm guessing it'll kind of you know Get out of there wherever it's at but so don't do it don't use the feature and keep in mind this presentation is the reason the people who are getting their truck now put in their reservations in 2019 so now that they're getting them delivered what are they getting the cyber truck to put it in tesla fan terms really embraces its minimalism minimal interior minimal exterior minimal display so it's just a big fucking ipad in the middle of the car and you have to look at that to see how fast you're going see behind you and the commitment goes even further they even had minimal crash testing it's such a minimalistic design that there's only one giant floppy windshield wiper. The mono wiper. God damn. Look at that thing. The combination of torque and weight the Cybertruck has makes it impressive to compare to non-electric cars when it comes to towing or pulling in general. They love to show how much stuff it can pull. But as even Cybertruck fans will tell you, that's not exactly the market that they're going for. This truck has very clear weaknesses like the other electric trucks at truck things, off-roading, towing for example it's not very good at that stuff over long distances 
but spoiler, 90 something percent of people almost never use truck stuff with their trucks. They buy F-150s and they never tow anything or haul anything, or maybe once a year they do. Although most of these will wind up taking Timmy to uh, private school, <laughs> it's, it's generally an off-road, it's, it's really an off-road vehicle. Yeah. People have talked about towing capacity and hauling capacity and all of this truck stuff about the Cybertruck. And frankly, I just think these discussions are moot because people are buying this to be cool. That's the whole reason. Nobody cares if it tows or hauls. And frankly, that's also true of its competitors. The six guys in my neighborhoods with Ford Raptors, I've never seen them dirty. I've never seen them hooked on to anything to tow. People buy these trucks to be cool. And on top of that, people have been quick to point out that Tesla isn't exactly honest about their comparisons. They lie a little bit. But it's really an eighth mile race that they're showcasing here. And then they quote the quarter mile time at the end as if they ran a quarter mile race. But also, am I insane? This doesn't seem right. Why is this allowed? Let's slow down. Electric vehicles weigh so much. And while the Cybertruck is lighter than other EV trucks, it's still 7,000 pounds of steel going really, really fast, which normally wouldn't be as terrifying if not for the problems the Cybertruck has. Like like how you can't see out the back except through the stupid iPad with a camera. And it doesn't work that well. And there's no sprayer for it. The front dashboard is really long and very disorienting. And there's a big A pillar blocking your complete line of sight on the left. This truck has huge blind spots. Want the sun out of your eyes? Better hope it's not above you. I don't even know why there's a rear view mirror on here. You can't see out the back. Can't see out the back. Can't see out the front. Let's make it go even faster actually. The iPad just continues to make me so frustrated. If I had to like look at my radio every time I had to see how fast I was going, then it's like so dangerous. It's like you aren't looking at the road at all. And you need that screen to see out the back and the sides when you're turning, but only one at a time. You never need to look in two places at the same time. You want to see out the back, turn the blinker off. Easy. This is the future. <laughs> a big selling point of the Cybertruck is its steer-by-wire system, which is the first time a system like this has been put into a production car. Steer-by-wire is basically a digital steering system. It's a unique piece of technology for a car and a novel part of the Cybertruck, but it's still basically simulating the same steering that every truck has. It's just a little different. They use steer-by-wire on airplanes because it makes sense to do that, but steer-by-wire on the Cybertruck, it feels more like a gimmick than a real reason to get it. <laughs> the most prominent the dominant thing about the Cybertruck is its design. It's obviously made to catch attention and stand out, and it does. And plenty of cars are designed with that exact purpose. The problem is, when people see a Cybertruck right now, they're shocked because they've never seen anything like it before. It's the same phenomenon as seeing any fancy sports car that you've never seen before. It's a rare car, you don't get to see it that often, that's cool. But 2 million Cybertrucks is 600,000 more than PT Cruisers ever sold. Think about how many times you've seen a PT Cruiser and replace it with a Cybertruck and see if that design wears on you a little bit. In my opinion, over time, the unique design is going to serve as a detriment to the Cybertruck overall, certainly if that amount of trucks gets on the road. And like I said before, even though it looks like something Blade Runner would drive, it is not bulletproof. Blade Runner would die from bullets. And I figured part of the reason it looked like this was so it could be bulletproof, but uh, no. But every aspect of the Cybertruck's design actually makes it less safe. Tesla cars have a notorious problem with panel alignment, and the Cybertruck is certainly no exception. And the paneling also makes the sharp edges stick out. The angles of this truck are so sharp that there are places where you could clearly cut yourself on it. You can see right here, that's a pretty sharp angle. It looks kind of scary if you walk too close. Same deal up front. This angle in particular looks like if you walk too close, it might actually draw blood. The Cybertruck is just that brutal. There are some edges that stick out regardless of if it's put together well or not, so I have no idea how people will even know. The stainless steel panels also reflect the sun into people's eyes. Uh, the frunk, the classic Tesla frunk, the front trunk. Yes, that is how much space it has. Don't put your fingers there or your arm or your hand. That is basically unbendable metal. And maybe Tesla thinks that they could push some stupid software update and fix this or something. But I don't know. If it's as bad as it seems, it's grounds for a recall. I have another test for Aiden Ross to try. Now onto a section I like to call power features, which are just features that involve the electric part of the car. The battery life is bad. On the Cybertruck website, there's an extended battery that isn't available yet, but it also takes up a lot of trunk space. 
apparently, and would probably be really heavy, and it's not real, and it has no price. But there is a cool plug that you can, uh, you can plug your PS5 in the back. I actually kind of fuck with that. I like that part. The headlights on the Cybertruck are too bright and they shine in people's eyes. The Cybertruck also has a series of modes that you could put the car in that change the suspension and power levels or something. I don't know. It's kind of stupid. These are all your on-road settings. Comfort, beast mode, custom mode. Or you go into off-road mode and you've got different modes. Overland mode, Baja mode. It feels like it would make owning the car really confusing and annoying. There's a feature called dog mode so you can leave your dog in the car. I would never ever trust my dog in a Cybertruck unattended. What What if I couldn't get him out? Someone's gonna leave their baby in the fucking Cybertruck in dog mode, aren't they? I mean, you got an iPad for the kids in the back. You got the movies in the back for the kids. You don't have to fucking talk to them. Uh, one of the modes, like I mentioned before, is Wade mode, but there's also Beast mode and uh, cyber mode or something. Cybertruck activate goon mode. Wade mode was the compromise from Elon's original plan of making the Cybertruck amphibious. But Wade mode isn't the only serious compromise that had to be made in the time since the initial announcement. I mean, there are concessions made from the website. Is this false advertising at this point? Where's the line? <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna talk about isn't necessarily false advertising. I just, it bothers me that the cheapest vehicle is always the shittiest one. You can't just take stuff out and then make a shittier version. That sucks. It reminds me of having to buy fucking video games. You get the regular one, you could get the digital deluxe, you could get the collector's edition, you could get the master's ultra edition. Just, I'd wanna buy one thing one time. Just put all the stuff in the cyber truck and then charge one cyber price. You're subsidized by the government, Elon. It shouldn't be this hard. Who is the cyber truck even for? Now here's a problem a lot of folks have. You get so excited about something like this Cybertruck, you just go out and you just buy it on the spot. One of those impulse buys. Then you go home and you tell your spouse. They're not thrilled. They throw you out of the house. But if you bought the optional tent, no problem. <laughs> Tesla likes to act like this is a pickup truck, but if you keep adding things, you're gonna run out of trunk space pretty quickly. The extended battery takes up trunk space. You want a spare tire? Fuck you, put it in the trunk. The butthole tent takes up space. You can't put in a bike in there normal style, even if you don't have anything else in there. <laughs> it's also advertised as an off-road vehicle. It, it doesn't really seem capable of doing that. We're in off-road mode and right. in rock crawling mode, so you got full height and it's shifting the torque front to rear wherever it needs to go to the wheel that you're slipping on or, or right. driving through. It's also a really wide car with, a, like I said, a lot of blind spots and you can only look at one camera at a time. So it doesn't make it exactly ideal for city streets either. It's almost like it's made for the suburbs. I wanna jump back to the apocalypse selling point briefly <laughs> because it is also borderline false advertising. You would not be safe in the apocalypse in this thing. Also, what apocalypse? What? This selling point is made to appeal to a very specific white suburban American middle class paranoia. Paranoia of crime in American cities and fear of impending societal breakdown. Not an anxious fear, a like giddy fear where they like want it to happen so they can hang out in their cyber truck all day instead of going to their office job and having to talk to their wife. You might think I'm exaggerating, but this is a very dogmatic group of consumers often targeted by right-wing messaging and advertising. And they're usually sold solutions for problems that they don't have. God bless America. And that isn't to say that everyone who owns a Cybertruck is like this, but it is certainly a market that they're aiming to appeal to. So, okay, the Cybertruck doesn't live up to Elon's promises. What other issues could it possibly have? It's hard to clean because they didn't do any like coating or finishing. They didn't finish the steel. They didn't finish the car. Um, it's also dirty. Don't get me started. The roads in New Jersey suck. And that is the reason you see people wrapping them already and you're going to see that in the future. It looks like shit after like a day if you don't wrap it. It's marketed with this wheel cover, but it doesn't come with it. This, you see the open wheel, you see the brakes, but you also just have like no hubcaps and no nut covers and that's the only place I've seen rust on this truck. They're apparently redesigning it so they can send it out to all the people who already have their cyber trucks which I doubt they'll ever do. But even still, it's like, you designed it like five years ago. What happened? Did the tires change in size? The interior of the Cybertruck is supposed to look like luxurious and elegant, but it's just kind of empty and boring. It sounds like this when you drive it at high speeds. It's quite loud on the highway. Yes. There's tire noise, there's wind noise, yep. there's motor noise, yep. which is actually weirdly significant in yeah, this. Yeah, as soon as you slow, slow down, it reminds me of 
being on a subway in London. You also can't sell your Cybertruck for at least a year, uh, or Tesla will excommunicate you from ever buying one of their cars. Mm -hmm. So if you are buying a Cybertruck right now, pretty much you cannot sell it within the first year. Um, if you try to sell it within that first year, you can ask Tesla for approval to resell it. There's one more piece in the agreement as well after what you read, which is Tesla can also blacklist you from ever buying another Tesla ever again. Perfect. And the yeah. thing about people who buy Cybertrucks is they love Tesla, uh -huh. and especially in this early stage. So they really want to be able to get the Roadster and whatever future Cybertruck, whatever they're going to buy. So they really don't want to take the risk. It's supposedly meant to stop people from scalping the Cybertruck and upcharging people. But I think it's also so it doesn't look like people don't want their Cybertrucks because they might not because they aren't very good. But it doesn't matter, whatever. It's got a lot of technical issues and engineering issues and legal issues. But surely, at the very least, the super strong steel and really strong glass will keep people safe inside if they get into a crash. Right? Regulations on crash testing vehicles are surprisingly lenient. I didn't know this. Tesla hasn't publicly released anything related to crash testing the Cybertruck apart from this one video. That's not enough information. What happened to the dump? Is he okay? And people have pointed this out in regards to the Cybertruck over and over again. The hard steel frame of the Cybertruck won't dampen or reduce the kinetic energy enough for the people riding it. Instead, it will put that energy right up against the people inside. All that force going up against the driver and their brain. The Ford F-150 offered the best front passenger protection among all 11 pickup trucks we recently tested. The survival space held up well, and readings from the sensors in the dummy indicate low risk of injury to all body regions. Not to be too dramatic, but I think this says a lot about society. Many, many people define themselves on the brands and products they consume. And there's something tragic to me about how we value property so much that just the thought of our precious vehicle, our investment being destroyed is enough to completely disregard safety or even what the purpose is of destroying your car in the first place. It's for your own life. I have very little reason to believe that anyone would be safe in a high speed crash in this thing. And for something that was marketed to be able to go off road and demonstrably struggles to, I think that's a little worrying. Companies like Volvo do what's called the Swedish cab crush test for their semi trucks, which is the most difficult test in the trucking manufacturing industry for safety. It's not required in most places, but they do it anyway, just to show that they would still keep their drivers safe in extreme situations. It's a marketing tactic. And to be fair, the Cybertruck isn't a semi truck, but Elon's the richest man in the world. Did he not think of doing something crazy to the Cybertruck to show how safe you would be inside? Can he not afford it? I feel like it would be right up Elon's alley to demonstrate in such a flashy way. He did shoot it with a Tommy gun. Side by side, it's a little bit of a weak comparison, if you ask me. If it were up to me, throw the fucking Cybertruck off the mountain. Use the autopilot, crash into a wall at 200 miles an hour. See what happens. I don't know. Hit it with an RPG. I just want to see what happens. And I'm sure there's scientific information to be gained somewhere in there, too. I like guns, I like guns, I like guns. I'm not alone in my concern for the risk of high speed collisions in a Cybertruck. Not just what it'll do to the drivers, but to the other car that it inevitably will hit. And if you're ever in an argument with another car, you will win. To me, it feels as if the final product of the Cybertruck was informed by repeated individual notes and test drives by Elon specifically, and the engineers and designers did their best to make it happen. Right, check it out, you can double tap the window. Funny window smash. Window smash funny, remember guys? I'll upvote that, I'll, up, I'll upvote that. If I had to summarize the Cybertruck in one sentiment, it would be that uh, it feels like a Kickstarter project, like one guy just went insane with. Now given the reception to the Cybertruck, how mixed it is, and how slow the output is, the future of Tesla is a little unclear, especially as Chinese EVs loom over the American market. I don't think they're gonna be able to keep these things illegal forever, but I believe in response to that, Tesla has officially scrapped their plan for affordable family EVs. Kind of giving away the market, it's almost like he doesn't give a shit about anything other than enriching himself. Elon has been saying he was going to do this affordable EV thing since 
2006. He's done a lot of personal projects in that time frame. I'm just saying. And Tesla will likely always produce electric vehicles that are marketed as flashy and luxury. But unless something radically changes, even the nicest Tesla models are still just going to be another EV on the road. And probably won't be the best or most affordable of any of them. According to insiders, the future of Tesla is self-driving cars and robo-taxi. And here, we're going to go into 100 kilometers per hour. And at some point, it should read this. I need to touch the steering wheel. There we go. It's happy with that now. Now we're onto 100 kilometers per hour highway. It's decided we're having this lane next to us, behind this van. I don't get it. Why does everyone need their own individual $50,000 pod up to $100,000 with additional features like the air conditioning and door handle DLC, a 12 month subscription to the 60 to 80 mile per hour mode. Your seat reclines all the way. You just have to watch a 30 second ad first on the iPad. People say we're living in peak capitalism and at this point in history, sure. But I assure you it can get worse. Technological innovations are supposed to improve everyone's lives, not just the people able to afford it. And the more we invite billionaires and corporations into our homes and our lives, we seem to have less freedom and certainly less privacy. I think there's a lot of truth in the phrase, don't reinvent the wheel. The key, like, physical key is such an old invention that it's mentioned in the Old Testament. The door handle has existed since caveman times. And I know if there are any Elon fans still watching, he is a super genius and he invented space and he's not addicted to Twitter at all. But just as a thought experiment, just pretend he's stupid. You, you move the stress to the outside skin. It allows you to do things that you can't do with a body on frame. So we're able to make the, the skin out of uh, thick, ultra-hard stainless steel. It's really hard. <laughs> a Nepo baby with no qualifications, no skill set, with a cushy multi-billion dollar net worth. Listen to him talk. Listen to him talk about this truck. And look at the truck and just imagine he's stupid. I'm not asking anyone to agree with me. Pretend and make your own conclusions from there. Do your own research by watching the video again. Rewind it now and then like and subscribe. Comment for the Cybertruck in the video. Thanks. The American government has spent the last 15 years heavily subsidizing the clueless ambitions of an eccentric elite capitalist. And society has not improved as a result. And he's just one example. It's far beyond time this country actually got its shit together and invested in infrastructure and technology to improve people's everyday lives and ease the financial burden it takes to just move from place to place rather than delegating that responsibility to corporations who just so happen to never be held responsible for the illegitimate use of taxpayer money or illegal monopolies they form or the physical and human toll of the cost cutting they do. Is it worth it? At the end of the day, Elon wants his cake and his cyber cake and he wants to eat them. The Cybertruck is for the outdoors, but it's also for the lawless, crime-ridden, anarchistic, communist Democrat cities. And the apocalypse. And it's for towing, and it's a boat, and it's a luxury sports car. And it's a family SUV. Tank. But he can't have all those things. Tesla could very easily and very affordably put out a cheap, efficient and safe electric car. They are funded by the government and owned by the richest man in the world. But instead we get the Cybertruck, an exercise in vanity and compromise. And once you see it, it's just hard to unsee it. Just like seeing what cities used to look like in this country. You'll never feel grateful for that change, for what we are left with. All I can see when I look at the Cybertruck is what could have been. Thank you so much for watching my video. Press subscribe. Feel free to check out my second channel. I'm also going to be streaming again on Twitch. If you want to join, it's twitch.tv slash online. If you like videos like these, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It helps a lot with these more long form videos. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm glad you liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.